more. It's time for the always entertaining insider trading after show. We always feature a special guest today. Special guest, our director of scouting, Craig Button. Great to have you here. How fun is it to be on the insider trading after show? I love being on the IT after show. Yes. It could be called ITAS. Okay. So uh, this, you see that? still rocking the no sock look. Yeah, you're defiant. Uh, it yeah, doesn't matter yeah, what yeah, other yeah. people think. <laughs> Don't really care. Yeah, I think it looks fantastic. And those look like very comfortable shoes. Pierre Dorian, not in comfortable shoes right now. He's in uncomfortable shoes because everybody knows he has to move cap space to get Shane Pinto signed. Everybody knows no one around the league is going to do him any favors, and they're going to make it difficult for him. But as time goes on, it, get, it seems like it's just going to get worse and worse. Has he backed himself into a corner? Should he have already made the deal? Even though it probably wasn't necessarily favorable, it's not like it's going to get better as time goes on so, here. So I'm going to answer the question. Yeah, he's backed himself. He's created his own problem. Yeah. He knew how good Shane Pinto is. You know what he's going to bring to your team. And this isn't something that just popped up out of thin, thin air and has presented himself. So, yeah, now he's put himself in a box. He's put himself in a corner. He can't sign Shane Pinto because he doesn't have cap room. Well, no kidding you got to trade somebody and create that cap space. Geez, tell me something I don't know. But for Pierre Dorian, this is a problem created by himself. Yeah. There's no excuse for it. The manager is responsible for the cap, how you allocate it, how you want to do it, and everything where your money goes to certain players. When you already know how good Shane Pinto is and you find yourself in this problem, self-inflicted wound. There and you yeah, go. you're right. You think any team's going to try to help him? And I'd be really careful about trading Matthew Jones. Yeah, well, it, he looked great, actually, in the opening game, despite the loss. Well, are you goal. serious about winning? Yeah. Because Matthew Joseph will help you win. Yeah. That's how I feel. That type of player, you know what will happen? They'll be looking for that type of player down the line. Pierre Dorian created this problem. He's put himself in a box of his own doing. What about Craig Conroy? You've got Elias Lindholm. It's a tough situation. Had a great opening game against the Jets. And Pierre Lebrun alluded to it. You know, like with the Shifley deal and the Owen Power deal, obviously those GMs wanted to get those deals done before the start of the season. Everyone wants that, obviously, and obviously Craig wanted the same thing. They just can't seem to get together on a number. Are you starting to get worried that we're headed for another Matthew Kachuk situation? Well, I mean, Matthew Kachuk was a homegrown player that they ended up being able to trade for Jonathan Huberto and Uyghur. So if it ends up being a Matthew Kachuk situation and Craig Conroy can trade a a pending UFA and get a pretty good return, that's not all bad. But let's be clear here. Elias Lindholm is a top-notch player for the Calgary Flames. I don't have any question in my mind that the Calgary Flames want to sign him. So it's the first game of the season. I, I, I expect Elias Lindholm to be a real top player all through the games. I expect him to be a good player on Saturday when they play Pittsburgh. So do they play Pittsburgh? Or, yeah, they play Pittsburgh. Anyway, when you look through, yep. the, the, through the process, so, yeah, you, you'd like to have him sign before opening night. Well, you don't. Yeah. So does that preclude you? Does that create a problem? No. You keep working at it. I do know this, or I should say I believe this. Craig Conroy is going to evaluate his team and look at where they're at, see where they're at with Elias Lindholm if, if, if he's not signed come January or February, and then he can consider his other options. He doesn't have to get ahead of himself. We want to get ahead of things and start speculating. Craig Conroy is not getting ahead of himself, nor does he need to. Let's talk about Steven Stamkos. Are you surprised at all about the way the Lightning are, are treating him? And do you feel like, because players have egos, players have long memories. He took a bit of a discount to stick around last time. He clearly loves it there. He clearly wants to stay there. Uh, and I understand Brisebois' position, no question about it. But, you know, you talk about a homegrown player that's done so much for this franchise. Are you surprised they haven't? Uh, made him whole, so to speak, uh, already, even though maybe their situation as a contender is becoming a little bit more shaky? How, how, how good is your memory? Not that good, actually. I've indulged in a lot of things over the well, course of Well, it has of nothing to do days. with that. Oh, I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm going to rewind with you here, Lola. Okay. You know, the last time that un unrestricted free agency was pending for Steven Stamkos, he wasn't signed going into the season. Yep. In fact, he wasn't signed until right near the beginning of unrestricted free 100%, agency. 100%. Yep. So what's the big deal? I get that. I, I I get the I, I get that you'd like to be signed. Yeah. He's been through the he's gone through this once. I guess and, the and issue is that other players on the team have been given that courtesy, have been signed a year before their deals are out. Several of them actually. Well, I'm just talking about Steven Stamkos. Fair the last enough. time he went through this, yeah, yeah. He, he went. And I don't know what the what what he wants. I Steven Stamkos arguably is the face of this of the of the Tampa Bay Lightning. There's no question 
what he's delivered. And Julian Brisebois knows that. But Julian Brisebois is also perhaps waiting to see what's going to happen with the cap, what's going to happen going forward, how much money we have, and what do we want to do. Let's not forget that Steven Stamkos is in his 30s now. I, he's still a really good player. I'm not taking anything away from him. But, you know, what, what does it mean? Is What's the term? What's the dollars and everything? Yeah, I, I understand the comfort level of a player wanting to be signed, settled, and certainly somebody of Steven's stature that has delivered in a big way for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Yep. But, you know, depending on what – it doesn't feel to me like the relationship is fractured or there, th th that there's friction there. It feels like, okay, Julian feels that he wants to wait a little bit. I understand where Steven would like something settled. But at the same time, sometimes you just deal with the reality of, of the scenario. David Pasternak, he loved Boston. He didn't sign right to the last minute last year. I'm not I'd saying that the relationship is fractured, but Stamkos came out and said something at the first day of training I camp. I get it. And that's, that's unusual for Steven Stamkos. Yeah, th th that's fine. Th you're, you're right. Players have feelings. And yeah. he, he looks at it and goes, well, what about me? I get it. I'm just saying that I don't put it on the – I don't see like this uh, – being a flashing red light going, uh-oh, watch out here for Steven Stamkos. I don't see it that way. All right, fair enough. Uh, this has been another entertaining edition of the After Show. I believe Craig calls it the ITAS. When we return, our good friend Todd Furman with Todd Talk.